Welcome back to Ballot 2023 on Plus TV Africa. Well, before the break, I mentioned we'll be discussing the way forward for Nigeria, highlighting the conduct of the governorship and state assembly elections, the protests erupting from a group parties and candidates, Peter Obi's petition against Tinubu, and many more. Well, joining me on the show today, I have Mark Ogo, President, Editor in Chief. Africa Watch Network Lagos is also the author of Nigeria in the Global Perspective, public affairs analyst, opinionist, columnist, and publisher. You're welcome to the ballot. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, Okunabo Unko Teria, a public analyst, is also here with us, but virtually. Hello, Okunabo. All right, Okunabo is not yet with us, uh, but we have Reverend Joseph Hayap. He's Khan Chairman Kaduna Chapter. That's the Christian Association of Nigeria. Hello, Reverend. Good to have you with us. Good to be as we look at the way forward for Nigeria. Yeah, indeed. Well, let's begin with the speech by the president-elect, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Uh, he has acknowledged the verbal ethnic attacks and violence uh, during the polls. And he's also asked that the healing process, post-election healing process begins. Um, Reverend, I think I should start with you. How do you respond to this call for post-election healing process by the president-elect Bala Ahmed Tinubu? That call is important. And coming from him is good. Because tensions are already high. There is so much there's so much anger, there's so much dejection around the country. The fact about it is that people are not just angry because the electoral process was faulty, but people are also angry because of the way and manner they were treated. You can put up so many things. So there is anger hovering all over the country. So that call is super and good. But wait a minute. Before you make such call, you have to be honest to yourself whether you are not also indirectly having a hand in those actions that have triggered the anger. Whether you are not indirectly having a role to play or you have played a role in the reason why people are angry. So that's why most time when you want to do anything, you have to be careful because there's always a repercussion. There is no reason, just because I want to be in power, just because I want to have a position, that I will instigate others against others. Because by the time I get what I want, I will still have those people that I have provoked. I will still have those people that I have ridiculed. I will still have those people that I despise who govern. So the problem with this country is that most of those who lead or who are leading us or who want to lead us seems to forget when they are looking for power that people can think that people understand and people listen. But it's true and it's good for the president-elect to make that call. But I'm just afraid if he do not have any role to play in the first place when this whole thing begins to gather momentum. Because though this challenge is not just restricted to Lagos or one part of the country, it's actually everywhere. But I just want us to make an honest assessment of what is happening and what has happened. And then that is when we can call for peace, we can call for dialogue, we can call for understanding. You cannot have rope oil all over my face and tell me, no, we need to be clean. We can't be clean until the oil on my face has been clean. So we have to be sure we are not just playing out a game that is not true. Okay, but Reverend. If there is honesty Re and genuineness. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you, but I, I want to get Mark's opinion on that too. But before you, you, you give us your opinion, Charles Otto, public affairs analyst, has also joined us virtually. Hello, Charles. Hello, good morning, Maureen. Good morning to Thanks you. Thanks Good morning. All right. Yeah, okay, Charles. So let's have yours and then we'll take Charles because it's important for us all to respond to this call by the president elect. So let's have yours, Mark. Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, there's nothing wrong for people to call for peace. Mm. Uh, even when uh, you have a war, maybe violence everywhere, and uh, people are calling for, let's come to a round table to discuss and uh, find a lasting solution to the problem. I don't see anything wrong you know, with such calls. Uh, but we must acknowledge the fact that uh, uh, this election, as far uh, as I'm concerned, is the worst election so far in the history of Nigeria. That's right. If you want to talk about, uh, you want to start from 1999, 
uh, from uh, the former president, Lushigu Obasanjo, who earlier called for the cancellation of the election. And uh, during this time, what did he do to reform the electoral process? So uh, uh, the, 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 the international community has acknowledged that the election was controversial. And uh, it's only those who are seeing it from the other perspective, uh, the few who probably uh, must have participated in, the, in this controversial election are the ones seeing it as the first mm -hmm. election in the history of Nigeria. Uh, but uh, for the president elect to call for ceasefire and uh, for peace, for everybody to calm down and let's stick <coughs> together and uh, move Nigeria forward, I don't think uh, any, anything is wrong with that. But we, 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 should, we should also acknowledge the fact that the president elect should also acknowledge that the election was also controversial. Then uh, the peace initiative, then we can take it from there. All right, Charles Otu. Your response to the president's call, president elect. Thank you very much, Maureen. Thank you to the guests, both in the studio, Mark Ogu and the uh, Reverend. Reverend, good to see you. Uh, my good to see you again. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Why uh, I will agree with the two guests that there is nothing wrong with the call to just a very little extent. I would refer to what Masha McLuhan uh, said in one of the key major theories of mass communication. Those of us who did mass communication, there is a theory we call Masha McLuhan's theory. And that theory states that the medium is the message. If the medium is reputable, if the medium through which the message is coming is credible, is reliable, then the information it is passing will sync with the receiver at the other end. Uh, in that, on that note, I want to say that that call is coming from a very wrong quarters. Because what the president elects, what people expected was that the president elect ought to have responded spontaneously to the allegations from the various international bodies before the EU observer mission. The, the, UN press, the uh, United States Press Club and other notable personalities across the world had, since the 25th of February, been raising issues about the discontentment of Nigerians regarding the February 25th presidential election. The president and his team did not react. They are rather pleading with world bodies to congratulate the president-elect. I think it's a, it is a jaundiced and a very wrong call coming at the wrong time from the wrong person. Because if these international bodies witnessed what they witnessed, and they have gone ahead to say that, look, this is not just a crime watch. They are calling it a crime watch. But I call the last episode, the last Saturday's election again, a bizarre crime watch. It wasn't just a crime watch. It was uh, a, a, a haste that has never been witnessed in the history of this country since I'm, I'm not sure, I wasn't born before 1953, but even what I read in the history books, no election has been chaotic. No election has been disputed the way this last two elections has been. So, All right, so if, you are, calling for, if okay. you are calling for peace and you're not addressing the issues, you've not spoken to the facts raised by the various observer missions across the globe, raised by the uh, various prisoners across the world. I mean... It is like what Reverend said, you, we are still dirty and you're telling us, look, uh, we just have to move on and expect that. So uh, the hope is lost completely. Well, about before we, we came, yeah, yeah. thank you, Charles. Thank you, Charles. Uh, before the elections, President Buhari had said he wanted to leave a legacy with these elections. And people have also lauded the Electoral Act. At what point did things start going bad? From your analysis, because we still, this is post election uh, conversations, we just keep digging deep into all of it all uh, because people who forget their history are bound to repeat them. Four years from now, we're going to go to the polls again. At what point do things start going wrong? Reverend, from your observation, in yeah, yeah, I think uh, most of those promises were more rhetoric than action. The president did promise us that the legacy he wants to leave is for a credible election. And some of us actually buy into that because we felt 
He had actually contested three times and lost. And coming from the pains of that experience, he wouldn't want Nigeria to repeat it again, and he will correct it. But sadly, from day one, INEC showed that there were all those things were rhetoric, but were not backed by actions. The fact is that INEC violated her own rules, her own procedure, her own what he told Nigeria he's going to do, he didn't do it. And sadly, the president didn't offer. That was when the president was supposed to confirm to Nigeria that his earlier promise is genuine. But what he simply said was, go to court. And you know, in this country, when you are already cheated, when they have already finished you, they ask you to go to court because they know the result that will come out of the court even before you walk to the door of the court. So it is sad that the president gave us good promise. Uh, many Nigerian youth who have not participated in the election before, where the enthusiasm came as a result of the assurance from INEC, from presidency, from every quarter, that this election is going to be credible and backed with technology and so on. But what we saw was something completely else. We are still receiving stories of how he even in some states, they are banned, it must be this, it must be that. Even when people have not voted for that. So how what kind of what credible what credible election will you present or will you claim to have offered when entirely the result is not what the people give, it is what you want. You are insisting this man must win, not the person or the will of the people must prevail. So once the will of the people do not prevail in the election, everything is gone. In everything, whether logistic wise and so on, the only little good thing that happened was on the second election, INEC came on time. But after coming on time, what happened? They still went back again to the old fashioned. All right, Charles, across the country, different stories played out. We had some flashpoints. And these are not carried out by President Muhammad Buhari, in fairness to him. Uh, this was not, th these things were not carried out by Professor Mahmoud Yakubu. What's your take on some of the things that politicians did across the country, especially in rivers, Delta, uh, Bayelsa, uh, Enugu, um, Lagos? Let's hear your view on that. Thank you. Uh, you, well, you, you, you didn't mention a point because um, maybe because people are not in this, on the streets, people are not protesting. But what, what happened in a point is even not within the media. What happened in Abia is the same as what happened in Enugu and also Ebony, the three states where this governorship election was held. In Ebony, I was at the INE collection office on Saturday night. And like I said yesterday, before we got there, calls started coming that we shouldn't come out, that talks have seized the entire vicinity of the INEC office at the local government secretary. They started shooting around 7 at about 9.30 p.m., the governor himself came to the place, followed a route that was not the normal local government uh, gate. They asked them to switch off the light. They switched off the lights. They were supervising the figures. They said, oh, look, in this world, there are 12 words in Africa, not local government. Look, uh, they, we cannot allow them to take this word, these two words. Uh, we cannot allow opposition to take these two words. Take these figures and put clean. Most of those places, they ended up with figures more than even the number of registered voters in that locality. That is the, the evil that happened across the entire 28 states where this election was held. In only very few instances, where people stood their ground, like in Abia and Deep and uh, Enugu, and people are testing, you could see that even the Obingwa result that is being talked about, is, uh, the, the meat is, uh, is demystified. Yet, INEC is sitting on defense. Now, to your question, you, you, you may not have um, those people at the helm of affairs to blame, as it were, but then everything centers and falls, rises and falls on their inability to provide leadership, beginning from President Muhammad Buhari to uh, Mahmoud Yakubu. How, how would you want us to swallow your words that you gave us 68 times that election results will be transmitted real time online? I mean, how would you? Both, both the commission's uh, chairman, the spokesperson, Fesu Sokoye, if you put on Google how many times were we assured of the functionality of Beavers and this is really? the electronic of results, you would see that the whole confidence building process among Nigerians began from the staggered elections in Oshu State, in Anambra State, in Ekiti State. So when, I, when people counted the 7th November election in uh, Anambra, uh, 7, uh, November 7th, uh, 2022 election, 
you add it to what happened in Ekiti. You sum it up all with what happened in Oshun uh, State. Mm -hmm. So the confidence building process was mm -hmm. high among the youths, particularly first-time voters, that this election was going to be spectacularly different and that technology did have a role to play. Now, all of a sudden, you now tell us that the guidelines you set, you, 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 you can't abide by them. I mean, what was wrong, Maureen, with INEC transmitting the presidential election results real-time, online, the same way it did the National Assembly elections? OK, I mean, okay Mark, let me, let me ask you this question now, uh, Charles. Uh, I, I've, I've made a case for the president, uh, and I've also made a case for Mahmoud Yakubu. Um, in your opinion, how should they distance themselves from all these irregularities that played out, from all the sham that we saw playing out, how do you suggest that the president and the INEC chairman distance themselves or, well, that, you know, that is, justify? That is not, uh, it, 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 is like, it is like asking, how will a woman that gave birth to a baby in the market, in an open market, where people saw the woman and assisted her to get put to bed. How would the woman now say, look, I am not the one who put to bed in this open market. I am not the one who gave birth to this baby. They cannot be, they can't distance themselves from it. I think part of the problem we had as Nigerians was believing in a president that has, that had failed creditably. How can they remedy Mo it? Can they remedy it? it? Can they redeem their it, images, do you think? Because it, after it, the presidential it, it, election, Nigerians thought, oh, okay, uh, the governorship election will give INEC the opportunity to redeem its image. But uh, as I said, I did make a case for President Buhari, and I did make a case for Mahmoud Yakubu. Uh, can they redeem their image? Is it too late in the game for them to redeem their reputation, would you say? The, 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 only way to, the only way they can remedy it is to do what is not expected of the APC government. Because the APC government in Nigeria, we've seen it, flout court orders, even to the point of the Supreme Court. So we are going back to that same court, the, 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 the litigants, the, the candidates who won this mandate truly, are going back, most of them are going back to the same court that the APC government has at various points failed to obey. Because the same Mahmoud Yakubu, the same uh, Muhammad Buhari, looked the other way around when these warning signs were coming. And they are telling us to go back to that same judiciary to ask them to remedy what has been done wrong. I, I, I don't see, the only way they can redeem themselves really is to try to stay away from influencing the judiciary from doing the right thing. I said it, I've said it repeatedly that all that I needed to do was to live and abide by its own laws or rules and guidelines. If you made a guideline and say, look, this is how this process will go, there's no need shifting the goal, point, the, the, the goal post at the middle of the game, which is what INEC did. In most of the places like Enugu and the, uh, and the, and the, and the Abia, where uh, the elections are, are put on hold, it's just because two same individuals, two same professors, stood their ground to say, look, you cannot bring figures and bandit figures and just say, I should announce. Part of your guideline says, I should review what I am announcing. And for all the noise that the both parties, the PDP is making in both Enugu and, uh, and Abia, even including a point, just because maybe perhaps people are not on the street, like I said before. I mean, you cannot make your own rules and flout your own rules and disobey. So I am calling on both, uh, uh, first of all, Mahmoud Yakubu to step aside at this point, because in the, in, the, in the history of this country and the elections, if Mahmoud Yakubu was to come from a certain section of the country, more than you flash your mind back to 2003 Absolutely. elections. Absolutely. 2003 elections, uh, uh, Morrissey Wu had, had not finished declaring the election results as it were, which was far better, far more credible than what we saw now. No 350 billion dollars was spent on that election. And people were shouting all over the country and saying, you would rule, you would rule, you would calling him a matter of names. All right, let, let, let Mark come in here. <laughs> Charles, let Mark, Mark come in here. And President Muhammad Buhari to stay away from influencing the judiciary, from carrying out justice in the electorate. Because all they have been telling us before now, 
is that, oh, uh, the, 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 what used to represent BFAS then, which is a, a card leader, was not captured in the Electoral Act. Now that it is captured with Esther laws backing the INEC, which is its own guideline, to use the BFAS and returning the electoral results, the president should stay away from a person and the APC should stay away from a okay, person in the judicial corrupt. All right, to Charles, let Mark come in. Mark. <laughs> Mark, the president had promised to leave a legacy with this election. But here we have a large percentage of Nigerians are crying against what has played out. And I'm asking, is it too late for the president to redeem his image? If it's not, what should he do? <laughs> a president that, uh, that is even ready to go, that said this morning that uh, he can't wait to go back to his farm. <laughs> <Daura>. <laughs> you know, the president wants to leave. And... Uh, of course, uh, he promised Nigerians that uh, he's going to give us fair, credible election. And uh, he provided all the resources needed to INEC to go and do their job. And he has, and he has judged this election to be good. Well, That's well, the thing. Well, the president well, himself has well, judged it, it to be cannot, good. cannot, Mr. President, you know, he belongs to APC, the ruling party. So what do you expect him to say? That the election was uh, uh, controversial, just like as Al Jazeera and the international community has our journey to be. Of course, you don't expect that from him. He's the leader of the party. So whether the thing goes wrong or right, he's there to defend the party against the wishes of Nigerians. But the issue here is this. The elections have come and gone. Mm -hmm. Some of the aggrieved uh, candidates are going to court they have gone to, to court. go and challenge mm -hmm. the elections. So what I will advise Nigerians is this. Is, yes, most of us have lost confidence in the judiciary. But we can still uh, have this kind of belief that the judiciary will do wonders. Because if we keep saying, no, the judiciary, we don't have trust in them, if at the end of the day they give justice, so let us be patient and allow the judiciary to do their work. We can't continue to say the judiciary, they've, uh, 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 they've, uh, 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 they've given wrong rulings all these years. What our advice is, let Nigerians allow the judiciary to do their work. Let us trust them that they will do the right thing. Okay. You, well, know, you know, if you... If you, if you if you look at uh, the 1963 election mm. that later brought in the military, you know that election was, there was no difference between this 2003 election and the 1963 election. It was almost the same thing, violent everywhere, violent everywhere. And that also gave rise to some of the military guys to uh, come and recoup again and distract. And we saw what happened at the end of the day. So Nigerians can still have this confidence that uh, why the judiciary will do their work, they will do their work rightly and bring back the confidence of Nigerians so that uh, uh, in the in, in, in 27 election, Nigerians can nasty believe that, oh, uh, the 2023 election, there were a lot of uh, 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 controversy, there were violence, but we believe that the judiciary will do the right thing. I think that's what Nigerians should be longing for now. You know, what you said, the elections before these ones yeah. marred with violence, and here we are, same rhetoric. What should be done to put a check on all of this? Because history repeating itself, ugly history repeating itself. Mm. The political thugs that carried out the violence, the political elite that messed things up in their various states, we're not seeing actions taken against them. And so next election, they're going to come out stronger, aren't they? You see, you see, if we, if we follow the trend of elections in Nigeria, you will discover that uh, the same scenario plays out every four, four years. And because the leadership structure has not also acted when they're supposed to act. So as if they have a kind of a cabal or cabalism, whom they probably they often use to, you know, to commit these crimes. And those who are supposed to come out to condemn it, they will not condemn it. They will allow it to continue they become, like my friend, we say, we now have four hands of government. The, the, the Kabas itself and those who are used to perpetrate these crimes. Mm. So what we need is let the law, let those who are, are the, uh, I mean, uh, in, the, in the leadership structure should allow the law to take its course. The police, the armies, 
you know, while I was even in Delta State uh, to monitor this election and the things I saw and, uh, you know, the Tell report that came around. Tell us yes, some of the yes, things you yes. saw. While I was in Delta, some of the things I saw, I begin to wonder whether uh, Nigeria is fighting war against uh, itself. The report from Lagos, the report from uh, uh, Ebony, just like uh, Mr. Charles said, mm -hmm. you know, we were monitoring all these things. And I was wondering, are we actually uh, in a, a democratic process or we are at war with each, with, uh, each other? The conclusion is that over the years, election has never been conducted free and fair. What we have had in the, in the past year is selections by the cabals, and uh, who probably use the talks, you know, to destroy uh, uh, electoral materials, who snap ballot papers, and so on and so forth. And because they know very well that at the end of the day, the law will not take its course. Mm -hmm. They will be protected by the same, this set of leaders who are going to lead us. So they believe, uh, you know, uh, I in can, for, I can. In, in yeah. Plato State, one man had the infantry, the boldness, mm -hmm. to cut mm -hmm. away 14 beavers machines. Yes. A technical officer there. Yes. 14 beavers mm -hmm. machines. He went away with them for 72 hours. Well, now he's been handed <laughs> over to the police. Reverend Hajab, <laughs> let, let's go to Kaduna uh, State where you are. Uh, President, um, Governor Nasser Arafai's anointed candidate has been declared winner. Does that make you excited or unhappy? You see, I, I just want, you know, when you were talking about other states and uh, our brother Kutu said something about Anamba and Enugu and uh, Abia, I was just looking at with a smile here because in Kaduna State where I belong, the same thing happened. Dogs come into a collection center, scattered materials, and nothing happened, no arrest. The fact of all is that at the end, in the collection, in the state collection center, a driver is shoot. Can you imagine that an INEC returning officer telling us as state people that the total accredited voters were 1,481,662 people? But it seems he even forgot. And he's telling us that the total vote cast is 1,546,748. You accredit 1,481,000, but you have votes of 1 million 500 and something. So you have over 86,000 votes. Where did you get them? And you still go ahead to announce the result, even when it is so glaring. Look at the figures. You know, we just begin to wonder, was he sleeping? Was he induced by something? Or he thinks everybody do not understand? But at last he has announced, because the whole thing is to tell, uh, our brother who is in the studio is saying that we should go to court. Court is actually the last option. And we, I do subscribe that going to court is the best option. But I think because the cabals, as you are mentioning, or the groups that are commenting and terrorizing and manipulating this country, know that the court will not give anybody justice. That's why they will do what they want to do and ask you to go to court. Simple logic like this. Go back to the television, live television uh, uh, recording that you have of their pronouncement of the result, and you would see this figure I'm saying. It's not that this figure came out after. This is what they were announcing. In a broad daylight, telling us that you have a total accredited voters of 1,481,000, 1, but you had also a total vote cast of 1,500,000. I don't think people will understand. But you see, this is the system we are having. Uh, the question I actually wanted to respond to was when you said that uh, is there a possibility for remedy? Yes, according to the Electoral Act, INEC can remedy this because the Electoral Act permits INEC returning officer or INEC chairman to, after certain days after the first announcement, review. And if you understand that what was announced on the first day is wrong, within that period he can review and announce something well. We have beavers. If beavers, if those elections were actually sent to beavers, it would take us 10 hours to bring out each local government uh, uh, information that was sent to the server. And now bring, count it and bring, give us an authentic result as it is in the beavers. People cannot just sit and be writing re results the way they want. You are telling us that 120 people were accredited, but you tell us that you have a vote of 120 people. How can you have 100 people accredited and have a vote of... How did you even get the ballot for them to have casted that vote? So the, the system is so funny that you can't even imagine whether we have a future. I don't know what our children are watching and thinking about Nigeria. I saw a young man yesterday who openly tore his international passport. Hmm. I sat in my room and I went for my country. 
because that is to tell you the level of frustration that is going on in this country. Yeah. And at the slightest provocation, anything can happen. In our state, people are not on the street, not because justice has been done, not because they were happy. People simply are not on the street because they have put, look, long before the elections were collected, they put military all over so that they will go down whoever protest. And so people chose not to protest. But you see, let me use the word of one of the famous uh, presenter in Nigeria today, uh, Rufai, who said, okay, you have been announced. But have you won the heart of the people? Have you won the respect of the people? Do the people trust you to be their leader? They just yeah. announce what they want to announce, but have they announced the will of the people, the mandate of the people, the vote of the people, or they just announce what they want to? And if you put in anybody into leadership without legitimacy, give him the next 10 years, he will not know what to do because any leadership that has no legitimacy cannot perform. Okay, Any let's leadership let's that has no legitimacy us. cannot win the love of people. Any leadership that has no legitimacy cannot win the support of the people. And that is why this country will continue to be where she is. After four years again, we'll come and do another phony exercise and go away. Another four years will come and we are saying we spent billions and trillions of naira. For what? Yeah, billions of naira on this election because beavers was deployed why did this seem like rocket science in Nigeria when Kenya did well with it? What is it about the Nigerian and the Nigerian factor that's affected the use of beavers, if it can work in other climes? Uh, Charles, you want to come in here? Okay, thank you. Uh, it, it is simple. Uh, many analysts, I wish I quite agree with, have put it, uh, the blame on the systemic institutional failures. INEC, as it were, has a staff strength. Uh, first of all, INEC, as it were, claims, uh, it says it is independent. I was wondering while I was at Afik not local government headquarters, secretariat, where a sitting governor was moving around with talks in the night from one local government to the other, maiming, destroying materials and all of that threatening even the EO, the local government. And I was uh, saying to myself, I, I asked myself, I said, look, how independent really is INEC? Because that is the fundamental question. Apart from the systemic failure, if you have that INEC office in a neutral ground, there is no how a local government chairman should have more access to that place. That's because it's spotted within the, 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 the secretariat of the local government, which is the local government uh, uh, office is close to the chairman's office. They know the people that work there. They know where the generator is. That's why they could send talks to go and switch up the generator to use torchlights and manipulate figures. Before then, they changed the way both real soldiers and police, including youth corps members who were at that point of collision at the world level. Yes, I like came early, but what did it achieve with coming early? They came early, stayed late. So. They, they can, uh, the processes can be manipulated. Now, what, 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 what really went wrong wasn't because the technology was not there, but there was this, you, you, you've heard many people say that, an INEC officer will tell you, I don't know how to operate these beavers. I don't know how to upload this machine. There is no network. I don't have data. And people will provide some of those things for them. People will even assist them, do it themselves, to ensure that things go smoothly and right. And at the end, you ask, where is the 350 billion naira that was budgeted for this election? Mm -hmm. If you use, if you spend 100 billion naira on it judiciously and expeditiously, you can build structures outside the government influenced areas. That is the truth. Where this exercise could have been concluded peacefully. One, two, if you deployed police and the police people were more uh, interested in, in, in protecting the interest of those uh, parties of individuals that, like you watched in, in Baoshi State, where two policemen were guiding and protecting a stalwart of a political party who were, was giving money to people, doing vote by openly, and then destroying evidences where they thought they were losing. And the police, officers of the Nigerian police, for their faces are known, they are seen. I mean, I think uh, uh, what the, the duty Buhari old Nigerians now is to set up a sincere commission of inquiry. I don't know where he's going to get the men, but there will certainly not be men from his government who will look into these issues, 
And you don't know when he's going to get the man. Uh, should he go to heaven or moon to get them? <laughs> well, well, if 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 he's really if he's really angry, because I know he's not about what has happened. But if he's really angry, and Nigeria was a place things work, work as as they should, what ought to have been done is to even bring in those international community observers mm -hmm. to make an honest report and make recommendations, far-reaching recommendations that could lead to the prosecution of these ones, at least that has been caught in broad daylight in this act of brigandage, and they can be disciplined or be brought to book. Because now, it is unlike 2003, unlike 1963, that is 60 years ago, where we will say, look, these things happened because we didn't have the laws, the stamp laws to punish offenders. These things happened because there were no enabling laws. Uh, uh, Car was not used because it was not captured in the law. Now, these things are captured in the laws back in the commission. If that law is not a mere academic exercise, if, it, if we've, we've not all wasted our time, dissipated our energy and resources, thinking to work on what does not work or what will never work, these laws ought to have been brought to effect now by the Nigerian courts. Mm -hmm. And that is what I think should have happened. Technology, yes, it played this role. In 1963, nobody would have recorded the kind of videos we saw in Lagos, we saw in Kaduna, we saw in Arabia, we saw in Enugu, and all over the country, including the ones we saw in Ebonya, of people openly buying votes. But because technology has come, it has enabled us, but it has also disabled us in a way that those who still wanted to manipulate the system manipulated it willfully and willingly. So the best option that is left before Nigerians, particularly the leaders, is to clean the audience table. First of all, uh, I don't expect that in the next couple of weeks, Mahmoud Yakubu should be presiding over this process. Because you see the, the way INEC is for dragging to even allow people to inspect the materials that have been used in the post at the presidential level. Mm -hmm. You will see that also play in the states. These resident electoral commissioners that are so, they have shown obvious partiality and corruption, traces of corruption, should be asked to step aside. Let us get sent people from wherever we can find them. The weakness of our institutions <laughs> is a major concern to everyone who's observing. Because even the U.S., well, not because it's the U.S. saying it, have said that those who are involved in all this, the violence and all of that should be brought to justice. But we have to wait for the international community to say that to us. Those who have been fingered, pointed, and who were visible in some of the crises we saw, the skirmishes, are still free and walking the streets. We, some of the politicians across the country who were fingered to have caused these skirmishes are still where they are. Mm -hmm. What does that say you, 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 about you, the you, hope that we have that anything can come out of the petitions that are being filed? If you, I don't know whether you have time to read about the uh, Financial Times, about the Nigeria, about the general election. And there was two very important points they raised in that uh, editorial. One, can the Nigerian judiciary behave like uh, uh, those one in Kenya? You know, the Kenya election was annoying among the, the presidential election. Even in Malawi, because of violence and uh, you know, violation of electoral heart and, you know, and processes. Those two vital points they raised was very crucial, or is very crucial. No, letting the, the I mean... Which the, two the, vital points? Yes, again? yes, yes. That, that is making the, uh, the point that can the Nigeria judiciary act like their counterpart in Kenya mm -hmm. and Malawi? That is the point is now the election has been joined to be, are joined to be the most controversial election in the history of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now the, the burden of proof is on the Labour Party and the PDP. Mm -hmm. Can the judiciary give them justice? Those are the key points they were raising mm -hmm. during their, you know, writing their editorial and making their, you know, their general observation about the election. Mm -hmm. And if you also uh, follow the international observers, the, the EU, like my colleague said, the, the uh, United Nations and others, all the report they gave, there was no different at all. The Violent, were, yes, yes, the criticizing the election, yes, criticizing the election and putting the body that the judiciary must do the need for. Now, the question of uh, institution, my brother talked about it. If you follow the trend of Nigeria, 
you discover that the institutional leadership over time has always been a failure. You want to talk about, uh, like you said, the INEC? You want to talk about the police? You want to talk about the army? I will take you back a little bit. I watched a video, which I'll probably I think your station must have even aired it, where uh, a threat was coming for one of the, I don't want to mention the name because you know, you know, as if it were to be somebody from the East that made that allegation that Igbos, you must not come out to vote on that day. Mama Chinedu, I'm sure DSS would have arrested such, such person with that. In fact, within 24 hours, that person would have been in with DSX. But what happened? Nothing. Nothing. So the point is, we are not ready as a country to move forward. The same mistake of uh, 2007, repeated itself in 2011, in 2015, 2019, here we are, we're talking about 20. The same mistake. And we have not seen where people have been persecuted or prosecuted for uh, uh, electoral violence. No, no, you know, right. We have not seen the same set of people who have been championing this kind of uh, uh, at law society, they are the same set of people this who are also going. This issue of ethnic, so, ethnic profiling. So, 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 of course, I'm coming them because nobody wins religious war or tribal war. Nobody wins it. If you remember the, the uh, Rwanda's case, you remember very well, mm -hmm. millions of people were massacred. Genocide. Genocide. Or you want to go back to the uh, Holocaust, where millions of Jews were massacred. And they said, never again will it happen again. Have we told ourselves that never again are we going to allow this kind of injustice, electoral injustice? Have we told ourselves, no, we will still repeat this mistake in 2027, just like that, because we are not ready to build institution that you and I can say, oh, we can do things rightly. We are not ready. We are still going to see the same mistake. We will keep talking, talking. And you know the funny thing? People will come on air to make the analysis, to come and say this. But at the end of the day, nothing happens. We will say, know, go back someone, to the same process. Someone has said to me mm. that Nigerians talk a lot. It's been so thrown up now more than ever before that I know of. Now, how can we move forward with this kind of ethnic profiling where uh, some members of the community or the country do not have a shared sense of national belonging? I'll start with you. Well, this, uh, this election that, you know, that uh, we just had, uh, you know, gave us a sense that uh, we are not really united. And uh, the, the only way we can break that gene uh, is to maybe probably start preaching a uh, oneness and forgiveness because uh, it's clear that the whole process was uh, bastardized. Uh, nobody can hide that fact. Uh, but however, uh, Nigeria as a country, uh, our foundation has been 40 uh, since uh, independence, 1960. And uh, some of us were privy to read uh, the book of uh, uh, the, 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 the former Niger uh, Delta Freedom Fighter, uh, Isaac, uh, Isaac Borrow, you know, Isaac in his Boro. book. Yeah, Isaac Borrow in his book, The 12-Day Revolution, where he stated that our problem of tribalism started immediately after we got our independence. That the so acclaimed three uh, uh, tribal, uh, I mean, tribal uh, set in our region, which is popularly known the the Yorubaks, the Aousas, and the Igbos. Forgetting that we also have other ethnic groups, it is we that are located to them that they are the majority, and that will, that that will continue to create more problem for us. What we need as a country is to unite ourselves, give everybody the sense of belonging. Let everybody have equal right and opportunity to, 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 to compete. Not one section of a, a country, you say they are the majority, and then when good things come, so you say, okay, let's allocate it for, for them. Then the other set of people, they are the minority. We will continue to create that problem. All we need is let us come back, sit in a round table, and decide how Nigerian should be run. 
Okay, Reverend, please come in. Uh, the truth about it is that um, what the last elections have exposed in this country is the deep-seated hatred, enmity, distrust that exists among us. We've been pretending for a long time that we are one nation, one individual nation, united nation. But the truth is that this election has further proven that we are divided strongly among religious lines. We are divided among our regional lines. We are also divided on ethnic line and so many other. But you see, the truth is that the political parties don't even matter. It's about those, some of those identities that I've mentioned. So the younger children, I don't understand that. I don't even know what they will be learning from us or what they are learning from what is happening around us. The division is so glaring. But like the last speaker said, I sincerely believe that this is the time for us to work towards healing, towards uniting, towards forming ourselves or bringing back ourselves. I work for an organization called the Global Peace Foundation, and the message we preach is we are one family under God. Uh, we take our message from the three Abrahamic religions. In Christian theology, the Bible says in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve. The Holy Quran also agreed with that teaching that the first man and first woman God created, he named them Adam and Eve. And the uh, Jewish religion, Judaism, also the Quran also agree with that account. So we take our message from that account and say, human beings are members of one family under God. So blood runs in our veins. There is no blood group for Muslims, no blood group for Christians, no blood group for Hindus, no blood group for Confucianism or whatever religion. And we also believe that uh, a woman is a woman irrespective of whatever identity she comes from. I think as Nigeria, we really need to come back and begin to see ourselves as brothers, as members of one family. If I have a need for blood transfusion today, you will tell me to bring someone from my tribe or someone from my religion. You simply need someone who has the same blood group with me. So we have a lot of things that brings us together. And we must work together to salvage this country. We must work together to build this country. Even if in the future we agree to divide, we must not part ways like enemies. We should just part ways for development. So we need to do that. And I want to advocate and advise the incoming leaders whether the president, the governors, and whatever office you hold, that if there's anything they need to work hard to do, it is to help in bringing back this unity, to help in championing back this unity, to help in conquering this whole idea. In Kaduna State, where I come from, there are young Muslim children who in the past 10, 15 years of their age, they really never have an encounter with a Christian. There are young Christians who in the last 10, 10 or 15 years of their age, they really not had an experience with a Muslim. So the impression they have is that any other person who is not of their tribe, who is not of their religion, is an enemy. And the reality is not so, because in the past, our seniors, and even some of us, we are privileged to school where it was a mixed school. People from different religious groups come over there, people from different tribes. The fact that we were even admiring each other's getting attracted with the names people come from different parts of the country or different parts of the state and bearing. And it was even mandatory. If you are my friend and you are a Muslim, I want to see you go to the mosque so that I will know that you are a serious Muslim. And if I'm your friend and I'm a Christian, you also want to see me go to the church uh, so that you will know that I'm a serious Christian. In secondary school, I know how to read some of my Islamic studies. I can recite them up to today. I'm almost 50, 55 now, but I can recite them as if I'm a Muslim, but I've never been a Muslim. I just enjoy following my friend to his class. After his IRK class, he will come and we'll discuss. But there is so much division in our country today. Yeah. So religious leaders have a lot to do. Political leaders have a lot to do. Stakeholders have a lot to do. But most importantly, this important institution called the media, you have a lot to do in helping Nigeria to build a new spirit, a new culture of tolerance, respect, and togetherness. How could I have been born in Lagos? And just because of election, and you are telling me today that I'm not a Lagosian, I don't understand that. How could I have been born in Kano? And just because of election today, and you think that probably I have another candidate different from your candidate, and you are telling me I'm not a Kanawa, what makes me not? I am, because my blood, my mother gave birth to me here, and I've lived here, I school here, my father has invested here. If he has not invested any, he has paid tax here. So I think we must begin to correct this and honestly do it strongly in all our places of faith, in school and other things. Yeah, we, and, you know, media... educationally, in our educational system, we need to inculcate or bring up studies that will help young people to begin to appreciate others and see others as bringing beauty into their lives, not threatening their lives. Yeah, we as the media will continue to play our part as 
we have been doing. Uh, Charles, your take on this. Okay, thank you. The, uh, the, the, uh, my co-guest has spoken well, except that I want to differ. I don't want to sound uh, sanctimoniously religious about that because uh, um, even the Bible said that righteousness and justice are the very foundations of, of God. Of God, of, of God, God himself is a God that doeth justice. And that's why they say he's a just God. Now, what it means, what this means basically is that you you cannot have a you, you cannot have a nation where there is no justice. That's true. And I'm speaking directly to the leaders who are outgoing and those who are coming in. You know you've stolen the community drum. You cannot beat it in private. You cannot beat it in public. Why not return it peacefully to the public? They turn it to the community and say, I stole this drum thinking I could play it. But I found out that if I'm playing it in my house, even in the comfort of my bedroom, you will hear it and you say, oh, is that our community drum that was missing or uh, he's playing it now? The person will be provoked. No matter what you preach, no matter, the, no matter how sanctimoniously religious the police may be, if there is no justice done across the 28 states where these elections were held, if there is no justice done in the presidential election and the petitions seem to be reasonably heard and determined and uh, 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 punishments meted to those who, has messed up the system, who have messed up the system in its entirety, then every other thing you're preaching, if you like, come and uh, carry my own Bible and go to church with me as a Muslim. I will still be, I will still be doubting about your, the sincerity of your belief system. Because of what it is not anchored on justice. Uh, Maureen and my co guests, remember that it is the same justice, it is the same drive for competence, capability, and, and, and credibility that has made an Indian to become a British Prime Minister. Societies are moving, they are leaving us behind. People are looking for competence wherever they can find them. They are not looking for, oh, this person is from my religion, is from my community, is from my. I mean, I mean, I expect that both the owner of IFE. The Oba of Lagos, all the Yoruba prominent uh, paramount traditional rulers right. should be able to okay. issue a, a statement condemning the threat that was meted out on Igbos during the last Saturday's election, before and after the election. You, you know what? That is when the healing process can begin. Yeah, I think but that's a good place to stop. That's a good place to stop yeah. this conversation, mm -hmm. Charles Otu. Time will not allow us to continue. But tomorrow we'll continue with the ballot 2023. And I'm still going to ask this question on social capital because we cannot escape it. If we're going to move forward as a people, every member of this community called Nigeria must have a sense of belonging. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Mark Ogo, President and Editor-in-Chief of African Watch Network, Arthur, Nigeria in the Global Perspective. Charles Oto, Public Affairs Analyst, and Reverend Joseph Hayap, Khan Chairman, Kaduna Chapter. Thank you so much for being part of Thank the you. program today. Thank you for having us. I am Maureen Menongwezigui. Have a good day.